and we are watching this webinar. I hope it will be entertaining. Um, oh, it is now 11 o'clock, so I guess it's time for us to start, guys. Anyway, welcome, welcome to my webinar. Um, before we start, I, let, let me introduce myself. I hope I've met some of you before in various places around Ukraine when I've traveled and give, given real-life seminars, as I usually do. But if I haven't, just a very quick introduction. Uh, as you, I hope you know now from the screen, my name is Chris Kirby. Uh, I'm from the UK originally, but I live in Kiev at the moment. I'm, an, I'm a methodologist for Din Tunnel Education. Um, I'm also an English teacher still. I, I do things like this, but I also teach English at the London School of English here in Kiev. I previously worked in Odessa, for you people from Odessa, for the London School of English. Um, and I teach lots of different things. I teach little kids. I teach um, exam preparation classes. I teach adults. I teach business. Okay. Um, and, well, that's what today is about, which is appropriate. So I will be talking today, of course, about business English. So let's get started first with a little bit of information for you guys. Um, before we begin the seminar properly, I'd just like to remind you, you will be getting a certificate for today, as we always give with our, our seminars or webinars. Notice that the, it says the certificates will be available within one week. So please be patient. You will get your certificate, but not immediately. Okay, you might have to wait a few days. So certificates will come after. There's the book I'll be talking about today, um, and there's some good news for you too. 20 books are for free today. So we have 20 books available. So 20 lucky people will be getting a, a business partner book um, at the end of this session. So if you need any motivation or any encouragement, okay, to stay to the end, I hope you don't. I hope it's not too boring. But if you do need any encouragement, please hang around because we will be giving away 20 books, okay? So stick around to the end, and you could be a lucky winner. All right. So let's get started with my topic. Uh, the topic uh, is bringing the real world to business English through video. And it's pretty self-explanatory what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about teaching business English and talking about how using um, videos can really bring a touch of realism to the classroom. It can make your students more engaged, and it can also give you some, some real-life English language that they'll take away, that will stick in their minds, and they can use in their real lives, okay? So that's the topic for today, and let's get, let's get started. Okay, before we begin, I want a little bit of interaction with you guys. And I'm sure a lot of you do teach business English right now, or have done in the past, I just want to ask you this question. Think about business English students compared to general English students. What makes them special? Uh, what do business English learners need? And what do they want from their class? Please, in the chat box, just type anything you can think of. What do your business English, oh, vocabulary already, fantastic. Okay, spoken English. We got vocabulary again, vocabulary again, special vocabulary, exactly. Okay, they're highly motivated. Fantastic. Okay, exactly what I was thinking. And we're talking about using lots of vocab. They're usually less interested in grammar, in my experience, or at least in getting very accurate grammar. They're usually really interested in communication. They want to uh, be able to produce the language very quickly. In a general English course, uh, students work their way through the structures of English, um, but they don't often have the opportunity to use it so readily. If you teach, uh, I don't know, a second conditional to a general English class, the next day, they're, not pro they're probably not going to go out and use second conditional in their real life, right? Uh, if you teach negotiation skills to a business student, maybe sometime that week they're going to have a meeting in English and they'll actually use some stuff that you've taught them. So that's kind of a, a positive thing about our business English students, certainly. Now, there's a guy I want to introduce you to. I don't know if you've met this guy or heard of him, Evan Friendo. Well, he wrote the book, How to Teach Business English. So he knows a little bit about it. He's also a co-author of Business Partner, which is the book we're going to be talking about today. Okay? And he said, users need to know the words, but also the skills to do their jobs. Now, what I think he meant here, words, I don't think he just meant vocabulary, actually. I think he meant the vocabulary, the grammar, the functional language, just the language in general. 
So they need that, obviously, if they're going to use English in their work. But they also need to be thinking about the practical aspects of their job. They need to be thinking about the skills that they're going to use, too. It's a great quote, and I agree with him completely. Um, and I thought about this a bit more. And basically, you know, to summarize, business English is just language in a business context. And here's some adjectives I thought to link with uh, business English. Business English classes have to be relevant to the students. They have to be useful. They have to be practical. As I mentioned already, students want to take the language and they want to go and use it quickly. OK, so they need something that's relevant to them. As you all said, they need vocabulary. They often need specialist vocabulary. They need something they can use in their real lives pretty quickly. That's why they're doing the course. I've also had engaging here. Now, obviously, we could argue that every class for every student should be engaging. I agree. I just added this as a special consideration because, you know, students that we teach uh, business English to are often in the middle of their working day. Sometimes they come to us during their lunch break. Um, you know, they're busy people. So we need to get their attention. We need to get them focused. Otherwise, learning just doesn't happen because they're distracted by the other things they have to do. I've summed all this up with this title, OK? What they really need is realistic business scenarios. They need something happening in the class that they can connect with their real life and therefore they can use the language realistically. Okay, and I hope we'll see examples of these realistic business scenarios today. All right, when a business English student uh, look, looks at a textbook or looks at something in the, in the real world where they have to use English, they have a few questions they have to ask. I've written up here business related problems, because if you look in a, a business English textbook, most of them are about some kind of problem. Obviously, they're about a problem a student has to uh, overcome. And they have two questions about this, I think. The first one is more for a professional side. How can we tackle this problem? What's the right course of action? They could answer this in their first language. OK, but they also can answer it in, in English, too. Um, but this is the first question they're probably thinking about when they face the problem. The second question is something that we have respond main responsibility to, to deal with, and that's what language should we use? So the student is thinking, OK, how can I deal with this problem using appropriate and correct English phrases, English words, English grammar? OK, and this is what we're helping them with in particular. So. With that in mind, we're going to be looking at a lesson today. Um, and the lesson is from, as you know, this book, Business Partner, quite a new title from Pearson. Uh, just a brief introduction to the book, a quick overview. It has eight levels. Uh, as you can see, it's something a little bit special. Um, they are levels in between the levels. So, for example, you've got A1 level and A2 level, but there's also an A2 plus level. So there's an extra level there. You've got higher resolution for your students. Uh, higher definition, if you like, so it's easy to find the correct level book for your learners. Also, uh, Business Partner comes with a lot of material, authentic stuff from the Financial Times, from ITN, and obviously from the BBC, which brings us to this, which is the point of today's webinar. Lots and lots of video resources. Business Partner is full of video resources, actually, from uh, documentary things, uh, news footage from real uh, programs from the BBC in the UK, uh, also through to these dramatizations, if you like, of uh, business scenarios and business problems. And those dramatizations is what we're going to look at in today's webinar. So... First of all, I just want to, as we're going to focus on video, why? Why have I chosen it? Why is it so important? Well, I've written here, it bridges the gap. And what do I mean? Well, you know, the English classroom is quite an artificial environment for communication. You know, we have the teacher explain what the students should do. The students listen. They take part in activities. We know it's going to be quite artificial to what they really have to do in the real world. And we can't do too much about that. But there's some little things we can do. And I think bringing video to the classroom brings a little bit of realism in. It brings the outside world in. OK, um, audio does that, too, to an extent. We, we can listen to people talking in English and, and it helps us bring the real world inside. But in the real world, 
We usually look at people when we're talking to them or we see them. It's only having a phone call that you don't see the person or listening to the radio. And in today's world, this is getting, um, well, less popular. People are looking at each other all the time when they're having conversations. Think about Zoom. Think about Skype. You constantly see people now while you're having a conversation. So bringing video to the classroom, I believe, brings realism. So on to today's topic. Now we're going to look at one lesson and we're going to look at one topic from business partner. Uh, so to do that, before we start the lesson, we need a little lead in. You know, we need to start thinking about the topic. So I have a little bit, a little question for you. Now, please, just for a moment until I explain, don't write anything in the chat box. OK, I'm going to explain what we're going to do. All right. So just wait a moment. Right. On your screen, you should see there's a scale from zero to 100, okay? Um, I, I made this scale. So imagine, this is about being on time, all right? So imagine zero, is a, it's a score you can give yourself. Zero means that you're always late. You do everything at the last minute, okay? Whereas if you're 100, you're fantastic. You're always on time. You're always prepared for deadlines well in advance, okay? Now, what I want you to do is give yourself a realistic score and be honest, between 0 and 100. You could give yourself 50. You could give, give yourself 80, 10. It's up to you. You can do it now. Let's see what range we have. Oh, 50. Excellent. 0. Whoa. 80, 60, 40. I'm getting a little low. Wow. Low rate. 90 is the highest so far. Anyone more than? Oh, 80%. Wow. Okay, guys. Fantastic. Okay, okay, okay. So I just want to see what range we have there. That, that's a good range. We went right down to 10. Someone may be a bit, being a bit cruel to themselves. Um, some people gave 100. Like yesterday, someone, or a couple of days ago, someone gave 185, which I was very impressed by. <laughs> probably, probably lying there. If you came late to the webinar, by the way, you cannot give yourself 100. <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, thanks for being honest there. Uh, so we all have an issue about being on time, and we can be quite honest about whether we're always on time or whether sometimes we're a little bit late. Obviously, I'm always on time, but that's just me. All right, so why did we talk about that? Well, this is the topic of the lesson. This is the lesson we're going to look at directly from Business Partner. It's a communication skills lesson, and there is a communication skills uh, section in each unit of the book. Basically, this lesson deals with uh, realistic scenarios, business scenarios, giving the students a situation and giving them some functional English language, which they can use to deal with that situation in the real world. OK, um, it's about th this lesson is about dealing with urgency. So it's about being late, being on time and things like that. That's why we did the previous lead in for you, that you took part in. OK, so let's take a look at this topic and this situation. So it's a business problem, as I said, there often are. So we've got a business dilemma. How is the dilemma introduced? Video, okay? Lots of videos. In fact, today we're going to see a series of three videos from this section. And the video, we, we go, in the video, we're going to see a problem introduced starring, these are our two stars first. We're going to meet Sanjit and we're going to meet Katie, his friend. Or colleague as well. Sanjit, as you can see from his picture, has a problem. Something's gone wrong. And Katie, his concerned friend, is going to help him. Okay? What we're going to do, I have a little task for you. It's a short video. Is you're going to see Sanjit talk about the problem. He's going to explain what the problem is. And then he's going to talk to his friend Katie and ask for advice. Okay? My question for you is what advice does Katie give him? Yeah, does she gives him three options. I want you to listen carefully and listen for what the three choices Katie gives him. What can he do to solve this problem? OK, so we're going to go to the first video now. Good luck, guys. Listen for. Worried, Sanjit. What's the matter? Well, you know how we heard that Sendal, our regional distributor, may be having financial problems? I've been looking into it. It's worse than we thought. 
They've expanded too quickly and are in trouble now. So, I collected the financial details and any other information I could find and sent them over to Emma Berg, the financial analyst at Go Global. I did that yesterday, and even though this is obviously urgent, I still haven't heard back from her yet. Okay. The way I see it, I'd say you've got three options here. First up, you could trust that she's seen the mail, understands the urgency, and will get back to you as soon as she can. Or? Push her for a response, like with a call or an email, and be clear about your expectations for a timely response. Right. I like that better. I don't want to just sit and wait. Wait, that's only two. What's the third option? Did you leave the best until last? You tell me. The third option is you could escalate it and go over her head. You mean go straight to Claudio? Yes. To get clarification on what's going on with Sendall and to raise the issue of responsiveness. It would need to be handled sensitively, though. Sounds risky. I think I'll get in touch with her. Thanks. Okay, guys, so there were three options there that uh, Katie suggested. What were the three options? Email, yes, straight away, thank you. And to call, okay, anything else? Call, email, yep, yep, there was one more. Uh-huh, push her, yes. Ooh, go over her head, someone just said it, someone over, it said it already, go over her head. So we got three options, call her, email her, go over her head. Going to her boss, exactly, let's see. Yeah, basically, email her, call her, or get in touch. I don't think, I don't know if they said call her boss or just contact her boss, but contact her boss instead of getting in touch with her. So this is, they're talking about this financial analyst from another company, all right? Now, for you guys, let's, let's take a look. We've got three options here, and we've had an introduction to the problem that Sanjit has. Now, think about those two questions that I said uh, business English students have when they face problems are like this, when they face problems in the book. Well, which one are we looking at here? We're not talking about language at the moment. We're actually just talking about the first thing. So the students are looking at a, a problem and they're thinking. They're already starting to get um, engaged. They probably have had a problem like this in their real lives, and they're thinking, hmm, how would I deal with this? So we're looking at problem number one. Now, uh, Sanjit actually said at the end of the video, it was risky to get in touch with uh, the financial analyst boss, okay? So that one is not an option. We're actually left with two options. He could email her again and wait for a response, or he could call her. Now, <laughs> you've already started voting, great. Okay, what I want you to do now very quickly is write A or B, give your opinion, what would you do? Let's see, let's see. I'm gonna take a very quick sample, see how many See if it's at 50-50. Oh, it's 50-50 at the moment. Oh, no, B. B. B's winning. B's winning a few more seconds. Okay, okay. We're going we're gonna to stop there. I just want to take a sample of your opinions. And I notice most of you, most have said B. A few of you, um, I think it made 75% said B there. So you're going for the direct route straight to call her. Now, this is obviously what we do with the students in the class because this promotes discussion. It promotes uh, opinions. Um, and this is exactly what we see in Business Partner. Uh, the uh, idea for this activity is in small groups, the students have to talk and they have to justify their opinions. They have option A, the email, which is the low pressure uh, decision. Um, they have option B, the high pressure with urgency is calling her wherever she is. Great, except students might all agree with each other. Now, this happens a lot in classes. You say, okay, discuss this topic and, and give your opinion. It's fine. You can do that. But sometimes you get students go, I think, like if it was you guys, I think we should call her. Student B says, yeah, yeah I, I agree that he should call her, yeah. And they go, okay, finished. 
This happens a lot in my class, okay? And, and then you're like, oh, we, I wanted you to discuss it, talk about it a little bit more. So let's think about what can we do to make it even more engaging. If you want to extend this activity a little bit, there's something else you can do, which I love doing with my class of lots of different levels and ages. And that is give them their opinions. Don't let them use their own opinion. Give them opinions and give them opposing opinions. So you separate student A and student B. And you say, student A, your opinion is that you think Sanjit should send a second email, all right? And they will might go, no, but I, I disagree. I think you should call. And you'll no, I'm the teacher. <laughs> For this part, you're acting. So you think that Sanjit should send a second email. Student B, you think he should call, okay? You give them some time because it might not be their real opinion. And you give them some preparation time, and maybe just a minute, so they can write down some ideas to justify the opinion you've given them. Then after that, you put them together into pairs. You give them two minutes, maybe three minutes, up to you, and say, okay, now talk to your partner and, and basically have a little argument. It's uh, it's good fun. It pushes the, the discussion a little bit further because they have to disagree all the time, and they have to give reasons why they disagree with their partner. So it pushes the conversation to last longer. It makes them use more language but also it's fun, okay? They know that they're playing a role. They know that the teacher has given them this role. So they feel more comfortable in actually de de debating it a little more, okay? So yeah, that's what I often do in my class, not just in business English, but in many different classes that I do, okay? So give them their, their, give them their opinions, basically. All right. So good thing about business partner is we had those two options and you all had your opinions, but now we get to see what happens. So I've called this Sanjit's destiny. Okay. We're going to find out what happened to Sanjit, whether he emails or calls the financial analyst. And we're actually, if you chose B, which was the majority, um, we're going to look at option B first. And in, with business partner, you can get your class to vote, which option would you like to see? Which option do you think will be the most effective? So we're going to see now what happens when Sanjit uh, chooses option B and calls the financial analyst. So let's go to the next video. Option B is coming, I hope. Hi, Sanjit. Emma, hi. I'm calling about my mail from yesterday. Did you get it? Your mail? Um, yes, I got it. Well, I'm just wondering why I haven't heard back from you yet. I was expecting to hear from you within a few hours of my mail. It's really urgent. Huh? You only sent it yesterday afternoon. Well, I didn't get back to you because I haven't had time to go through it in detail. Sorry. <laughs> no offence, Sanjit, but I'm juggling a lot of work right now. So is there any more news on Sendor? Should we be looking for another distributor? Sanjit, slow down. Take a breath. I've been traveling since Monday. I'm running on zero sleep right now, and I have another meeting in about two minutes. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just busy, okay? I've seen your email, and I will respond by tomorrow morning, I assure you. Okay, sorry. Please prioritize this. It's urgent. And yes, I need a response ASAP. I didn't mean to react like that. Sorry. And I'm sorry for not getting back to you earlier, Sanjit, but everything is fine. No need to worry. You have my word. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm back. All right, so let's just go back 
to there we go back to the presentation all right so uh, that's option to call um directly <laughs> was it was it did it have a good uh, outcome was it positive or negative uh, you're probably influenced by the the sad music <laughs> at the end all right a negative right yeah it didn't work all right sorry for you guys that chose b it doesn't seem it worked i don't think we need to analyze that too much something went a little wrong there um with that relationship now obviously if your students were doing <laughs> positive really <laughs> if your students were doing this there's in in the book in uh, business partner there's some questions for them to look at um there are four questions actually so they have some comprehension questions to focus on when they watch the video. Uh, now, we're just gonna actually look at the last question for you guys, if you could answer this quickly. Right, Sanjay and Emma weren't happy. They were kind of frustrated or annoyed by each other. Why do you think they were? If you can type quickly, put an answer into the chat box now. Ooh, he's stubborn. Ah, okay. Ah, you blame Sanjay, not Emma. Let's see, anyone else? It's urgent, there's a misunderstanding, yeah, of course, yeah. Nobody has said no. No one thinks they're in love. <laughs> no. Maybe they had relations. Oh, fantastic. Oh, this is great. Wow, we're like making a story with Sanjit and Emma. That, see, see the connection here we have? See, it's engaging. All right, anyway, so we're going to find out what happened now with option A. Okay, so you guys who chose A, was that the best outcome? Let's see. What should I say? Friendly email ought to do it. Something like, let me know when you'll get a chance to send me the information. Email's definitely the best option. A phone call with no warning can be a bit of an imposition. She'll see the email is less pushy. Sounds good. Um, hi, Emma. I'm just resending my mail from yesterday. I'm worried that if Sendal goes bankrupt, we'll have a big problem. When do you think you'll be able to get back to me? Thanks, Sanjit. Okay, good. Now let's see what happens. I mean, we're their business partners. He really should be getting back to us, especially with something important like this. I'd be surprised if there was a further delay. Me too. Then again, they're very busy, so they may have a different perspective than we do. Maybe they have different or more information and don't think that this is urgent. Well, she just replied. And? Hi, I saw your original email, but I'm overloaded at the moment. Nothing to worry about. All is okay. Can I get back to you by tomorrow morning? Great. Absolutely. Just a reply I needed. Thanks for your help. It's no worries. All right, guys. So, um, there you go. I think we can see that option A, in this case, worked a little better. He did get a reply, but it was a bit more positive, right? A bit more positive outcome. Now, the point is, of course, with your with your class of business students, um, they might disagree. A lot of you said that we should call directly, uh, and that's fine, um, because the, the idea about these videos is they promote discussion and they promote interaction, and maybe in the company that they work for, this email idea wouldn't work. Maybe it's even against the policy. They should be more direct. Uh, so that's fine. And, and what you'll find if we looked at some more business partner uh, videos is that it's not always so straightforward as this. That's what I like about them. Some of them, you look at option A, B, and there are different outcomes, but you're left thinking, well, neither was the best outcome. Not, not, neither was ideal, you know? But I think that's the point, right? Because in the real world, 
Um, when we bring realism to the classroom, in the real world, uh, things aren't always black and white. This is the best option. This is a very bad option. It doesn't happen. And the idea of these videos is to promote discussion with your students. So if you disagree, that's fine. Okay. There is no 100% correct answer here, just like any business situation. Okay. Now, remember, so what we looked at here was basically how to tackle this, the business problem, engaging your students, making them interested, making them draw upon their own experience and seeing the relevance. Now, what we're going to look at next is what language should we use? So now we have to get into the English. And actually, the language they can use, they've always already been exposed to because it was in the video. And the purpose of this lesson is to talk about functional language. So by functional language, we mean uh, useful phrases, useful uh, chunks of language, they're often called, that you can uh, use in a certain social situation. Ready-made chunks to use. Now, uh, in this case, we're talking about discussing priorities. Now, you can see right now, I've taken this directly from Business Partner, and it's as part of a table, yeah? So on the left, you've got some different categories for phrases to discuss priorities. We've got defining priorities, requesting an update for high priority, requesting an update for low priority, and responding to those requests. Now, what you can see now are some of the sentences that came directly from the video, but obviously there's some gaps. When we're teaching our students the, these chunks of language, we could just give them a list of language. We could say, here's a table of phrases. Go ahead, learn them, use them. But they're unlikely to do that, right, unless they've done any work with the phrases. So we have to do something with them. So here, what we have is uh, basically a gap fill. Now, in the actual, uh, in the book, this table is presented with a box at the side with some words, and they have to just match the words into the correct gaps. Uh, I didn't want to do that with you guys. I, I thought we'd just look at a few examples because I guess I, I think you can guess the gaps yourselves. So let's just do a few. Please write in the chat box, what's the missing word for number one? Please, <clears throat> this, it's urgent. What could it be? Quick answer. Prioritize. Okay, thank you for Anastasia. Reply, okay, Let, let's see. All right, yeah, number two, I think you mean. I need, uh, <clears throat> by tomorrow morning, we have reply, we have answer, yes. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's look at number three, last example. Let me know when you'll get a chance to send me the reply, yep. To send me the answer, okay, fine. Let's see what we got. So here, we'll fill the gaps quickly. Yes, prioritize, of course, with number one. It was, I need a response, a reply would fit or an answer would fit also here. It actually, these are directly from the video. Uh, you uh, Let me know when you'll get a chance to send me the information. The other ones that we didn't talk about, I'm sorry for not getting back to you. I'm overloaded, really useful word, like overworked. Um, I will respond to you by tomorrow morning, okay? So we got some sentences now the students can use, but there are many more sentences in the videos. Now, we could like look at all of these sentences in this exercise, but it can be boring if students have to do the same exercise again and again. So we do give the students more phrases, but with a different style of exercise to keep them interested. And we'll just look at that quickly. Again, this is directly from Business Partner. We have Now we have the um, categories from the table, but we have complete sentences and we have to match them to the categories. So tell me which letter. We need to make this our top priority or we'll miss the deadline. Is it A, B, C, or D? What do you think? Oh, A. You think A, C? Oh, we got a difference of opinion. The answer is it's A. It says make top priority. So the defining the priorities here. Okay. So next one, let's go. Can you update us as soon as possible? We were expecting delivery yesterday. Which one do you think? We've got A. A, C, B. Let's see. Oh, interesting. Yes, it's C, guys. You got it. it. Because it's update as soon as possible, so it's urgent. Yeah. Uh, next one. I'm in a meeting this morning, but I'll send you an update when I get back to my desk. We have a D, we D, B, B, B. Oh, let's see. D, it's responding, right? They're responding to a request for information. And one more. That's a lower priority. The deadline is still a few weeks away. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I saw a right answer back there. Oh, not with disagreement here. It's a lower priority. So it's deciding where to put this problem in your list. So it's defining priorities. Okay. So a little bit different way for the students to uh, become aware of these chunks of language and these phrases and get them kind of fixed in their head a little bit more. They've been exposed to them. Now they, they're uh, being, doing some practice with them, basically. What comes next? Well, we want to, it's, it's a functional language lesson. We want the students to put the phrases into practice. Um, so, you know, they've seen the video, they're interested in the topic, they've had their own ideas about how they would approach the problem. Then we've given them the tools that they can do that with. Here's some phrases you can use. There's a variety of them. You can use them to sound very fluent, um, very professional when you're in, in English uh, business dealings. But they need to practice it, right? So we need a task. And business partner is full of tasks. Some of them are quite short and quick and easy tasks. Some of them require a little more preparation. Let's take a look at the tasks we have for this section. Obviously, it is a role play. Now, we're going to put students here into groups A and B, or sorry, assign them to student A or student B, and then give them information about their role. Now, let's take a look at an example. First of all, student A. So this, again, is similar to the situation we saw in the video. You sent your partner an email, but they haven't replied. Uh, but it also gives you some of your personal uh, experiences. You're under pressure at work. But you're kind of, you're kind of sympathetic, right? You, maybe they didn't respond because they're too stressed. Uh, as, ask for a response, but be supportive. So you know now, not only the situation, but how you should react and how you should behave with your partner. You're going to be a nice boss, maybe, or colleague. Um, next, uh, your partner has their situation, too. They're pretty overworked. They've been working for six weeks on the website. Uh, their mother's sick, and they want to visit their mother, and they want to um, ask for time off, too. So it's a difficult situation. Now, how do you set this up? Well, obviously, what you can do when you're doing these role plays is just give, these, give this information to a student, Tell them to read it, give them 30 seconds, and then say, now do the role play, talk to your partner. Because it won't really work. They'll kind of um, um, have a conversation that begins a lot like that. Uh, what you need to do in this case is give them preparation time. If you give them a, a reasonable amount of preparation time, like three minutes or so, two or three minutes even, uh, they will at least think about the situation and plan what they're going to say and obviously, remember, you want to encourage them to use the target language because that's the whole point. If you rush them into this role play, they won't use the target language. So give them a little bit of time to think what they're going to say. I often ask them to use three or four of those chunks of language. If you ask them to do too many, they'll put them in inappropriately and they won't use them correctly. OK, so three or four and then bring them together and let them have the conversation. And it's fun. It's interesting. OK, well, is it realistic? Well, people often say if you give preparation time, they're probably high level students. It's not very realistic. I think it is. Think about student A. Student A, they, they, they're going to call their partner or something and they're going to uh, talk about this, this issue. But obviously they're concerned about their partner too. If this was me and I was doing this uh, interaction with a colleague in English, I personally would think about what I was going to say in my own language. I wouldn't just make the call. I would think, oh, I should be sensitive here. How can I approach this without being too aggressive or too direct? Okay, So I would personally do that, and I think people do in business quite often. So it's actually quite realistic to give this some thought before you do it. Certainly in the next one, she, this, this student, this uh, colleague wants to ask for time off. You'd certainly think about what you were going to say to your boss before you ask for time off, right? So it is quite realistic. All right. Think about it. Now, we're coming towards the end of my section now, so that means we're getting closer to the lottery. Um, <laughs> just to sum up, I hope you saw today how the, um, the, this lesson tackled both of these problems. We got the students engaged. We got them interested. We made them think about how they would deal with this problem in their real lives, got them to relate it to their, their, their actual experience from their careers, from their, their business world, 
But then we took them into the actual language and reminded them that a lot of the phrases in there are really useful phrases that they can take away and use when they're using English at work. So then we actually analyzed the language and used it in a very realistic task. And I hope you would agree that what we saw with these videos from Business Department is we've got very realistic scenarios that really happen in the real world. And we, we've given them real language with which to deal with these scenarios. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope the videos were entertaining. Um, the, I hope you feel a little sorry for Sanjit at the beginning. Um, and I hope you enjoy anything more that you see from this, this title. It's, it's a great way to use videos in the classroom. And videos generally bring a lot of realism, whatever your class is and however you use them. So thank you, guys. And one last thing before we go to the lottery, I just want to tell you about some free resources that are available for business English um, on Pearson website. Great to use if you're teaching online now because they're online resources. Um, I've got the, the website is there on the slide. I also made a QR code. <laughs> OK, uh, I hope it works. Uh, I did try it a few days ago. So if you want to scan that, it should take you straight to the website. But the website is there also. I'll just give you a few seconds to do that before we go to the lottery. You can find it on Pearson if you haven't got time to look now. All right. So now we're going to go to the lottery. It's the time you've been waiting for. Um, so 20 online, it's 20 books free for 20 people randomly chosen. And right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the screen over. I will stay here, but I'm going to pass the screen over to my colleague. There he is, to Gennady, who's going to pick some random winners. So keep watching the screen, guys. Don't go anywhere. It's exciting. I'm not doing this. Look, hands-free. Gennady has control. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We see the list of names. He selects all of the emails. And we're going to go to website, random.org. So you can see that he hasn't chosen the names. I didn't choose the names. Uh, uh, this computer platform, this program is going to choose them. They all go in the box. Fantastic. When someone did this this uh, a few days ago when I was doing this webinar, the one of the winning emails was Chris, K-R-I-S. It wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> all right. Top 20, here we go. So find your email address. If tell, see if you can see your email address. Svetlana Lucky sounds lucky. Okay, we've got. Oh, let's just pick some random names. Uh, oh, it's quite hard to read. Lady Helen two thousand. I like that. <laughs> if you're there, Lady Helen two thousand. Favorite teacher eleven. <laughs> um, you're lucky. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Great. Well, there you go, guys. If you remember that your certificate, don't forget your certificate will take about a week to get to you. Please don't think it's going to appear immediately. You might have to wait a few days, but it will come to you. Um, and if you, if, you want, if you want a book, um, well done. And thanks for taking part. Please keep following the uh, Dinternal webinars. Um, or look at the Dinternal website. There's a lot of more webinars coming your way. And also come and see me live streaming on Facebook on, uh, on a Thursday. Also look at the Dinternal website for details of that. It would be great to see some of you there. Thanks a lot for coming. And have a great day if you're teaching, whatever you're doing. It looks like it's going to rain really heavily in Kiev. So stay, stay safe, stay inside, and do some Zoom lessons. Talk to you soon, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.